Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. You know, in nature with plants and stuff, I'm sure a lot of you have heard the term perfect flowers or imperfect flowers and are monoecious and dioecious. And I'm sure some of you probably know what that means and there may have been some of you wonder what that means, but in imperfect flowers on plants means that the only one of the sexes is representative. The plant's either male or female. Uh, <clears throat> when you hear about perfect flowers, these are plants that have, uh, on the flower parts, they have not only the female plants, but they have the male stamen portion also. The female flower is also known as a pistil, and sometimes you'll hear the term pistillate hairs uh, when referring to different plants and stuff, or with cannabis in particular. And then you'll hear about staminates or staminate hairs or stamens and stuff like that, and those are the male parts. And uh, for the most part in nature, most of our flowers are perfect flowers. Uh, they actually have the, uh, the male and female parts on them. Now there are some species in nature where the, uh, the female flower comes out and the pistillate parts come out, but it's devoid of the, of the male stamen or the male stamen is maybe sterile. And uh, there's not another species that offers the pollen. So these types of plants, uh, they're not propagated usually by seed because even if there was a crossing, if it did occur, it would probably be a weak one and therefore probably not a viable species to produce an offspring. So plants like that, we'd have to do from cuttings or root divisions and stuff like that. But for the most part in nature, our plants are perfect and uh, the flowers are perfect. And that means that the male and the female portions both exist on the flowers. Now, when you look at the cannabis plant, tonight we're going to start a new series called The Science of Cannabis. And, and uh, we're going to discuss many specific uh, scientific areas concerning this, the cannabis plant. And tonight's episode, we're going to talk about hermaphrodism in the cannabis plant. But before we do, I want to do kind of a general discussion on the cannabis plant itself. Now, it, it does not follow into the uh, group of plants known as perfect flowers. Uh, the cannabis plant itself, the sexes occur on separate plants. You have a male plant that produces the stamen or the pollen sacs, and you have a female that produces the female parts or the pistillate hairs. Now, <clears throat> it takes the pollen from the male to to pollinate these pistillate hairs to produce the seed. And that's the offspring or progeny, that, that ultimate flower, that's the whole purpose of the flowering process is to get to that end result, produce the fruit, which is the seed. And that therefore give you a, a reason to, and an ability to further propagate the species. In cannabis though, now it is quite unusual for a species of plant to have sexes on separate plants. And for, for the rest of the plant, uh, morphologically, phenotypically, and all that, they're the same except for the sex uh, portions of the plant. And, uh, but what is even rarer, in fact, I can't think of another species of plant on the planet that does this, but with cannabis, uh, we, we have a, a uh, situation that occurs rarely, it's not real common, it does occur though, uh, that's known as hermaphrodism. And what this is, is if you have a female marijuana plant, and she's in full bloom. In other words, her pistillate hairs are growing like crazy and she's forming what we call the flower tops, which is the smokable portion of the plant. If there's not a male pollen source available, the plant uh, goes into stress. Of course, the, the, the slang name for this is called sensimilla, and that name is a Spanish word, which means seen, which is without, and semilla, without seed. So sensimilla really derived from the fact that the females were never pollinated. In other words, the male pollen source was kept away from the females, and that way, all that she does is produce pistillate hairs, which are full of THC resin, and therefore gives you more smoking material. It doesn't make the THC stronger in the plant, it just actually makes more of it. But in this, uh, in this particular species, and like I said, the uh, separate sexes on plants is not a common occurrence for the most part in nature. It does happen a lot, but it's not very common. But what is very, very uncommon and very rare is this case of hermaphrodism. And what happens is you have these female plants, they're producing these flowers and stuff, and they're sex starved. They, they want to be pollinated. I mean, the reason they're putting out the pistillate hairs at the rate they are is because they are in that mode of wanting to be propagated. They're wanting to be, be fertilized and, and to produce seed and stuff. And when they get in this condition and there's not a male pollen source available, occasionally the female themselves will produce a pollen sac on the stalk at the nodes there on the, on the plant. And there may be one, there may be several. 
And uh, the extremes of this just depend on the on the species that you're growing, the different variety, and also to how how uh, what its history of pollination has been, bef which crossings it has been through before it actually got to that one. But typically, what happens when you have a female that is primarily f female? In other words, if you look at the flower and most of it is all pistillate hairs, then we, we would call that primarily female. And you look down around about the base, the middle of the plant there, and you'll see one of these male stamen pollen sacs form. Now the beauty of this is is that when you take the pollen and pollen that pollen out of that sac and pollinate the flowers on on that plant, the progeny from that will produce 95% female. In other words, if say you produce 100 seeds out of that crossing on that one flower top, 95 of those will be true to that crossing and they will be female. This is a very unusual occurrence. And if growers could, uh, could fine line this, and it can be, I mean, it, it takes years and years of crossing. I mean, the, the study I did took 10 years, but if, if you do the crossings right and all, you, you can actually get to some level of predictability with this hermaphrodism. Now there's other levels of hermaphrodism that occur. The male plant, which produces mostly only stamen sacs for the most part, they have been known to put out female pistillate hairs and, and pollinate them on the plant. Now the, the progeny from this don't come out about 95% male. They stick pretty close to the, uh, the uh, ratio of 50-50, but they're a little bit more. It's more like 65-35, but the, most of those will be male plants. They're good if you're searching for a pollen source or something like that, but they're, not, they're absolutely not good if you're trying to produce female progeny and female seeds. Now there are, there are times when the flowers on the female plant will be about half and half. I, I have seen cannabis plants that in full bloom that had the pistillate flowers all the way up the flower and then the male, the male stamens poking out every which way they could right on the same flower. And this, these were about half and half. And, this, and so it's sort of a 50-50 uh, chance there on the, uh, of the amount of uh, pollination that's going to occur because you have a lot more pollen available there. But those will not stick to the 95% ratio of females. Now these do characteristically produce more females in the progeny, but it's more close to the 50-50 that you see in a normal normal crossing, which was normal male and normal female crossing. The crossing itself only improves the THC content on the weaker plant. You can't take a plant that has a 15% THC value and cross it with any plant that has a less THC value and, and, and predict and think that you're going to have a progeny that raises above that 15% level. It just doesn't happen that way. But in this hermaphrodism circle and stuff, you can, you can if, you, if you're able to find a female that has produced a male pollen sac, there's a, just a few of them, and pretty much they're closer to halfway down the plant, and, and most of the time they're hard to see. I mean, you really gotta look close to see these little stamen sacs. You take that pollen from that and pollinate those flowers, the seed re resulting from that are guaranteed 95% female, and in some cases even higher. But guaranteed 95% of those will produce female, and they will produce true to the parent. It's not like that they're an anomaly or anything. They actually produce that, that particular variety. If you have a true crossing, in other words, a true crossing is, is crossing a male and female plant of the exact same subspecies. Say you had some pineapple kush and you knew for sure that the male plant that you have was specifically bred for to being pineapple kush and you have a female plant that's specifically bred to be pineapple kush. The crossing between those two will produce seed that is viable that pr will produce pineapple kush. Now if there's any crossing in the history of those, even several generations back, that, that will be carried over, but the percentages fall off. Every generation that it is removed, you're going to fall off about 10 or 15 percent in the amount that would produce that particular variety. So if, you, if you're really particular about crossings and stuff, be very careful as to where your parent plants came from. <clears throat> A lot of times people are, are crossing to get desired desired qualities, whether it's taste, smoking, the way it burns, the flavor, whatever. But when you're doing crossing, be sure you know the history of the two parents that you're crossing, because it's quite possible that, that one of them may have derived from a hermaphroditic 
uh, background or maybe from another uh, crossing that you had no idea about and it may not give you 100 percent the characteristics that you're desiring so always when you're doing the crossings if you're particular i mean if, if it's that specific to you make sure that you know the history of the parents and try to at least know that history back two or three generations preferably four or five if you can if you if you, most growers, at least the experienced growers and the growers who've been growing for a long time, this is a this is something that they do perpetually year after year, and they and they maintain true crossings and and of course they experiment. They, you know, we had probably three or four hundred different types of Indican varieties at one time, and now we're well over a thousand. And we probably, if they would legalize the stuff and really turn this over to the industry, we probably could, could develop several thousands. And and these would vary from percent THC to to smoke content, to just to, to many, many different factors. But it, it is all going to be dependent on how we as a society perceive this plant. And when you look at it from a scientific standpoint, how unusual this plant is, how rare it is in the fact that the sexes are on separate plants in the first place, and then when you look at the fact that hermaphrodism can occur in both sexes on separate plants and all, this is a very rare scientific occurrence. And it's just not something that happens every day. And if anything should give you weight to why a plant's important in nature is an aspect like this. This is a true survivor plant. This is one that doesn't, that can actually create progeny that can propagate into the future on plants that normally would require a separate pollinator that would it would never happen. This plant has an ability to do that. And the fact that we that we have a plant like that makes it very unique. And it's not one that we need to keep illegal. It's not one that, that we need to bastardize. It's not one to, that we need to print these articles and say is evil and all that. This plant is very useful. It's very beneficial. And it's something that we for sure need to have made legal in this country. And join us next time on the Cannabis Corner. We're going to delve further into the scientific aspects of this plant. And we're going to really get into some uh, heavy-duty THC chemistry. I know we touched on that in the past, but we're really going to get into a deep discussion about that and further growing techniques and stuff in the future. So thank you for spending time in the Cannabis Corner.